Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. When I got started into wood turning with a used mini lathe shortly after I retired, it came with a handful of, of an odd mixture of tools and I didn't have a good idea what a starter set was. Perhaps you're getting into wood turning or at least you're considering it and you want to have some idea what you're, what you're into. Hopefully these decisions that I made will provide you a little better insight into, into decisions you might want to make on getting a starter set. The good news is it only takes about a half a dozen tools to get started and you don't have to spend a fortune. First of all, let me start by giving you a broad overview of the three different uh, types of chisels, uh, of wood turning tools there are. The first category is what I call chisels and that's the flat edge tools that, that might look like this. Skews come in different sizes and what size you use is a function of what kind of work you, you tend to do and also what your particular preference is. A common size you get with some sets is a half an inch. I find that too small except for the most delicate work. I don't get a lot of use out of it. Three quarter inch is my uh, uh, go-to uh, workhorse for a skew but a lot of people prefer the little larger one inch. Some of that's uh, more preference. Then there's a very large one and three eighths inch. Uh, I rarely use this tool. So generally your, your major choice is going to be between a three quarter inch and a one inch. Either one of them are fine. I happen to prefer the, the three quarter inch. Now for a little more detail on the other type of chisel, the parting tool. They're flat tools also. They have generally have two, uh, two edges that, that meet. Uh, a typical size that come with a lot of sets such as this Harbor Freight set, uh, one quarter inch by about a half inch or, or five eighths. Uh, uh, this is not a bad size. I tend to prefer one a little bit smaller, a one eighth inch, and I actually made this from a, a bar of high speed steel and put a handle on it. Not terribly difficult once you've got a tool that you can uh, shape a handle with. Uh, some of them, instead of being flat on each side, have a, uh, a triangular shape that uh, theoretically provides a little less friction in the middle. I don't uh, personally prefer this this type. The other type, and this is a shop made one, uh, is a beading and parting tool. It's typically a piece of square stock, usually about three-eighths of an inch. This is actually eight millimeter and it's a shop made version made from a, an inexpensive bar of high-speed steel. You can get this uh, uh, in various places. I'll have a link to this on my Amazon shop. The second category of wood turning chisels are what they call gouges. Gouges are generally uh, tools that have a round or a profiled front, but they have what they call a flute. That's an area that's been milled out of the steel. Uh, they can be out of flat metal that's been forged or uh, bent round such as this. But more typically, except for certain style uh, tools, they tend to be made out of round bar. So the first ones that tend to be formed from uh, round or from flat stock and they have what they call a tang that goes in the handle that might be uh, rather, uh, rather small. These are spindle roughing gouges. They are never to be used on, two, on bowls or cross grain work. That is a grain that's going perpendicular to the lathe bed. They come in various sizes. Uh, this is one I've been using from an inexpensive uh, Chinese set that's about an inch, not a bad size. Three quarter inch is not a bad size. Uh, here's, here's a larger one, uh, and, which is uh, fine also. This is about one and a quarter inch. Now the old adage goes that if you ask ten wood turners, you're going to get eleven different answers. And what I'm giving you is based on my experience, my knowledge, my research, uh, and d doing a lot of lot of teaching. Other people may disagree and that's okay. But the profile that I like is the one that's shaped similar to these. That is they have somewhat of a U or a C shaped and they have a uniform wall thickness. They are sharp and straight across and that gives you the opportunity to they give you a little more versatility when you're you're cutting as I can show uh, in a future video. The other uh, style has an uneven thickness in the profile and that varies from this very cheap one where it goes from very thin to much thicker in the middle and this is hard to sharpen it's hard to get the best profile 
uh, straight across and it's also got a very sharp edge along along here which I don't like. This is a, a, a much uh, higher quality tool and it, it's one piece got a real solid shank to it but again I don't care for the profile because of that uneven thickness from the middle to the edge. It makes it a little harder when you're cutting on the edge makes it harder to to sharpen it makes it harder to keep it flat across it does give a lot of stability because of the mass though the cheap Chinese one a bunch of tools from Highland Woodworking I only keep around to show people what not to buy the next set of gouges I want to talk about are the spindle gouges or what might be more properly called shallow fluted gouges because they're not milled as deep as the bowl gouge I'll, I'll show you uh, shortly they come in different sizes, but basically the two major sizes are 3 8 inch, which is my preferred uh, workhorse size, and there's also the half inch, and some of that's personal pr uh, preference, but uh, I recommend the 3 8 inch as your first, first one. Uh, these are two different manufacturers here. These, are, uh, th th these two on the right are Robert Sorby. This one is from Doug Thompson Lathe Tools. I really like Doug Thompson's because of the steel and although it costs a little bit more than the Robert Sorby you get uh, about seven inches of flute compared to about four inches of flute so you get almost twice as much wear out of it for the money you spend. Now this whole episode is dealing with conventional uh, wood turning uh, tools. These are what I started with. It's, they would I, they're what I prefer. Some people prefer carbide and that's okay. Uh, I'll have a link uh, here to a, a video on comparing carbide, comparing contrasting carbide with conventional tools. Bowl gouges, or what might be more properly called deep fluted gouges because they're milled uh, deeper, they are uh, considerably stronger because there's more uh, stress on a bowl gouge than there typically is with a spindle gouge because it's hanging over the tool rest longer. They come in different sizes. These are three standard sizes and uh, these sizes I'm measuring based on the bar stock uh, which is a eighth of an inch uh, thicker than the way the British would measure. This is a three eighths inch. This is a half inch and this, this is what I would recommend most people starting with. And then this is a five eighths inch for a little bit larger bowl, uh, but I would say again the half inch is a good place to start. We're not going to get into sharpening in this, in this video and to some extent the profile of the cutting tip is a function of how you sharpen, but in addition it's a function of actually the flute design. Uh, here's three different styles. Uh, this one on the left is a, a V-shaped flute which is fairly tight down at the bottom. Uh, this one is more of a U-shaped flute, or C-shaped flute. I like this on the inside of a bowl. Uh, this one is more of a parabolic shape, which is my favorite. Uh, I find this clears chips better than the one that's a, a V-shaped. If you're a flat worker, some furniture maker, traditional woodworker, you're familiar with carbon steel tools. Carbon steel is that, that tool steel that's used uh, traditionally in tools such as uh, bench chisels or carving tools. It hones an edge very, very well, but it's just not up to the standards of modern high-speed steel wood turning tools that get much more uh, heavier abuse. Consider the use of a hand plane or, or a carbon steel chisel in use. It, it's just not moving a lot of wood. You contrast that with a bowl gouge against a bowl, say for example, 10 to 12 inches going at a safe speed, which could very well be 25 miles an hour, it'll generate shavings of almost a half a mile in a minute. And you're going you're gonna to be carving on this bowl for several minutes. So you need high-speed steel or one of the better alloys. And I'm not a qualified metallurgist, so I don't want to get into too heavy a detail, but just let me say that M2, t uh, M2 steel is uh, been around oh, for, for wood turning for more than 30 years. You should never buy a carbon uh, wood turning tool even if it's used. You can't find any new ones anymore except in the possibly the very cheapest stuff that you might get at, at Harbor, Harbor Freight. But M2, M2 provides real good value. 
There are better tool steels, but with that uh, better steel and a tougher edge, of course, comes at a higher price. And those include, such as this Carter & Son uh, Tools M42 steel, or from Doug Thompson Powdered Metal A10. Both of these are premium tool steels that hold up very well, but all of these will do well on your wood turning. If you're liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. The third category of wood turning tools are basically scrapers, and these are high speed steel scrapers. Uh, there are other scrapers that use uh, removable, replaceable carbide tips. Uh, this is a set I got from uh, uh, Penn State. Typically, they're going to come in different sizes and with different ground profiles, and you want to change them to fit your particular need. A pretty standard size with a lot of inexpensive sets are one quarter inch by either a half or five eighths inch. Uh, and then you're going to wind up as you do some wood turning, you're going to figure out the best way to grind it. Now if you get some inexpensive tools, you can always regrind them into a special purpose tool such as this one made from an old Harbor Freight uh, chisel. Uh, this spear point uh, shear scraper I use on the outside of bowls it was reground from an old Harbor Freight one inch skew. Okay, let's deal with a few questions and I'll give you a few answers. Uh, one of the questions is, should I buy a cheap set of uh, wood turning tools because I'm going to wear them out as I learn how to sharpen. I would say if you're going to get some instruction for someone and that's a great idea to get some instruction, you're going to learn how to sharpen very quickly and you're not going to have to worry about about destroying an expensive set of tools. On the other hand, if you don't belong to a club, you don't belong, you don't, there's nowhere you can get lessons or classes, then you might be advised to lean toward a, a a very inexpensive starter set while you're struggling with with sharpening. My advice is get some instruction. Another question uh, frequently asked is should someone start off with a a set of tools or should they buy them individually? I'd say to some there's, there's varying answers to that. Certainly when you get a set of tools of, of uh, six or eight uh, or more, you very well may get one or two oddball tools that frankly you'll, you may never never use, so you've paid for them and you're not going to get much use out of them. On the other hand, it does give you a quick start uh, and generally it'll include most of the tools you'll need. Unfortunately with some sets they may be missing one or two key tools that I think are essential for a starter set. For example, the tool may come with, uh, the, the tool set may come with a tool that looks like this and they call it a spindle gouge which is generally uh, an old style type of spindle okay for doing balusters or table legs but if you're doing the kinds of things that most hobbyist turners, bottle stoppers, uh, baby rattles, boxes, you're going to want a round bar spindle gouge like this and the set may or may not have one with it. So you might ask, what's the difference between a cheap set and a more expensive set? Well, one of the things I've mentioned is the quality of steel is it a true uh, M2 steel or is it some type of cheap uh, Chinese high-speed steel such as these two spindle gals with these two Harbor Freight sets, the white handle set, that, that were, were poorly heat treated. So the more expensive tools are going to have better quality steel. They're going to have better quality control. Generally they're going to have a better design. Perhaps they're going to have a more appropriate length handle uh, for that particular uh, size tool. Some of the cheaper tools, the handle is going to be too short, or the handle is going to be too thin. Uh, maybe the ferrule won't hold up, and you got to go back and 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 add some glue to give it uh, to keep the ferrule from from falling off. There's there's no end of of variations. There there the one thing to remember: buying tools is no, no different than anything else. There is no free lunch, and you generally get what you pay for. Here's one example on this uh, jet skew. The edges are very nicely rounded so it will roll easily and slide along a tool rest without, without catching or nicking the tool rest. The Harbor Freight set, for example, had very sharp edges that I had to take to a belt sander to round it off and get rid of those very sharp edges that tended to make it jerk along the, the tool rest. But sometimes you find that in more expensive sets as well. I've seen the Robert Sorby 
uh, skews like that that you still had to take them to the bench grinder and and do the type of treatment to them that should have been done by the manufacturer. Another question I'm frequently asked is should I buy tools unhandled? I would say for a lot of people that's a great consideration. Uh, handles come in all different shapes and sizes and frequently as you get to turning you're going to find yourself making tool handles no matter what. Here's a shop made handle. Here's a handle I made out of PVC. Here's an alumina handle that a friend of mine uh, made me. But you've got to start somewhere and it's hard to turn a handle if you don't have a tool with a handle on it. Uh, but I would say there are some tremendous bargains, uh, especially, uh, I'll mention two different types, American manufacturers including Doug Thompson, D-Way Tools, and Carter and & Son Tool Works all make uh, wonderful tools that come without handles or you can buy a handle. Frequently those handles are uh, very nice handles. You may or may not like them and they can be quite expensive. Uh, so that's just a question of your, your preference. I tend to like wooden handles. I like making wooden handles. If you don't like it, you can always, always change it. Another choice from unhandled tools, Robert Sorby, uh, they're easily recognized by the red lettering Robert Sorby, but also by this uh, brass uh, cap on the end. But they also sell a line of tools with a uh, re interchangeable tool handle. So you can buy the tools without the handle that will fit into that system so you can add your own handle. The one thing I would, I would uh, point out though, interchangeable handles or inter, uh, interchangeable tools in one handle aren't real practical because it's a pain to be changing the tool out all the time just to have a handle. Every tool should have one handle. And I would say just starting out, avoid specialty tools. Don't get too big a, a hurry to buy tools you're not sure what they're for or you think it's going to solve a solution you may or may not have or, or have it sold to you at a store for a, uh, to, to solve a problem you may or may not have. Uh, I'll have a later video where we'll get into some of those uh, specialty add-on tools that, that once you develop some skills you might want to move on to. But the key thing is developing skills with a few tools and be able to get be versatile uh, with them before you start looking at specialty tools. Some folks ask, is it okay to buy used tools and what should I consider? Certainly, if you can get it at a substantial discount price from new. M2 uh, and higher alloy tools, you can't, you can't overheat them on the grinder and, and ruin the temper like you could with a bench, bench chisel, so that's not a concern. You want to make sure they're not completely worn out. You do want to make sure they're not carbon steel, they're high speed steel, and it should be marked on the tool HSS for high speed steel. An extra consideration would be if the, if the tool is marked made in Sheffield, England, or it's one of the tools made in the United States by a current wood turning provider such as Carter & Sons, D-Way, or Doug Thompson. If you're handy with tools, uh, there is an option on a few of the basic tools such as possibly a skew and certainly scrapers and, and parting tools. Any of the, the chisels there's an opportunity for you to buy a piece of high-speed steel and, and make those tools at a, at a very reasonable cost. Much cheaper than you could buy them new. So here's my basic six accumulated over a period of time and I've described them in this this following list. You might want to stop the video if you want to read it more carefully. Some of your choices uh, on the low end but a reasonable choice are is either this Savannah set uh, from available from Amazon or, or Peachtree Woodworking or you can buy a very similar set possibly by the same manufacturer from Benjamin's Best at approximately the same price but in both cases you'll probably have to add a 3 8 cent spindle gouge a better solution a more expensive might be this set from Robert Sorby which includes all all six uh, items that you would need the best solution but at a higher cost might be picking and mac matching and buying each one individually. I'm going to be making some other videos focused on the brand new beginning wood, wood turner so so stay tuned. If you're interested in buying a, buying a chuck you might check out this video. Y'all stay safe come on back here.